Hey, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. We're working with the text fields. We're trying to make the keyboard and the whole screen move up and down, and we've hard-coded it, but we need to actually know how big the keyboard is. So that's what we're gonna learn in this lesson. And then we're gonna make it go back down when we press the return key. Right now, the keyboard goes down and our screen is all the way at the top. So that's not super useful for the user. So let's go back into our keyboard will change method. And I'm gonna get rid of our sanity check print message. And in here, what we need to do is we need to get the size of the keyboard now. This one's a little bit gnarly. I just want you to sort of type what you see here once I have it working, and then you can sort of follow along. We want to get the rectangle, and we're gonna get the rectangle, which is gonna give us uh, size information from the notification itself. And so we need to ask the notification for its its values. And in here, we've got a user info, which is a dictionary that allows us to look up information. Now there's a special keyword that we're looking for here called the UI keyword end frame user info key, which is going to give us that rectangle. Now it comes back as not a, a value. So we're going to have to type some additional stuff to convert it. And I know I have one mistake on this line, so it's not going to quite work as is. It's really hard to type this one correctly. We are going to see Xcode is going to give me a notification. Okay, I forgot the else at the very end. And we want to return if this fails, which it shouldn't. But if it did, we'd do that. And then here, this is an optional value. So we need to put a question mark here. Once we do that, it should work. And now instead of doing negative 300, we can do negative, and then we can take this keyboard rectangle and we can get its height. We build and run, and we should see that this now moves up the correct amount. The next step is then going to be getting it to go down. So we don't have that black bar. It looks great. All right, let's get it to go back down. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to listen for a specific event. And we only want to show the keyboard and we want to move everything up when the keyboard is on screen. So what we'll do is an if else, and I just want you to type this in. We're going to say if notification.name is equal to, and then we can go to the notification class and ask it for the names of the different notifications. So here we were looking for the keyboard ones. We're going to look for the keyboard will show or we're gonna say notification.name is equal to notification.name.ui keyboard. And so here, what I had is an issue with autocomplete. And because I didn't have a capital N when I was pressing, I'm not getting the info that I want. So I'll fix that. I'll press escape again and type keyboard will change frame. So if it's either one of these, we want to do this logic. And we can move this line up and down using the copy and paste or cut and paste, or we can do the option command. And then this is the square bracket. So under editor, there is a move up and move down. Super useful for moving content around. So that was under editor, structure, move line up, move it down. You can pause this if you want to look at these different options. All right, so that's going to move it up. Now, otherwise, we want to move the keyboard back down. And so to do that, we need to say, okay, I want to change my origin all the way to the bottom. And if you remember working with math at all, you've got your X, Y coordinate system. We're shifting something down or up and we need to go the other way. So in this, we're just going to say frame dot origin dot y is equal to zero. So this will reset us back down to the zero origin. And if we go ahead and run, you can pause the video so that you can type this code in. We should see that the keyboard now goes up and down. So that's how we can make our content interactive. That allows us to now use the calculate tip button, which has been masked most of the time. We can now see the interface, which is super useful, and we can press the return key to also get that same behavior. And that is because we are using the notification center 
we're listening for events from our notification center about the keyboard. We're saying, okay, this is the logic that I want to run when the keyboard changes, and then we're actually implementing it. Great. In the next lesson, we are going to get into actually using the text field, getting the data out of it, and then processing it so that we can do some math on behalf of the user. Really excited about it. Let's start the next lesson. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you want to download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below. You can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's going to send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects. It's going to be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm going to be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm going to be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.